from teachers ahead of them. I don't know where it all began. You can work from your photographs. They did back a hundred years ago. They, I don't know what all they did on the masters. But uh, back in the old masters, they, you know, they um, ground their own pigments. Of course, that was very, you know, original. How how did they how did they grind them? You know, and they were. That's more of the originality, but times have changed, and we just go in the store and we have some helps. It's not that they're not original, but we just walk in there and Grumbacher's got a pile of um, premixed colors. And, but it takes the artist, even if you use photographs or whatever you use, to compose the picture. You know, just just to figure out um, what you know, what you really to really compose it, and um, and be skillful enough to get it out there and make it enjoyable for other people. And if people copy off of you, well, it gets to be too big of a problem to do something, but um, that's how we learn. And that's how the masters learn, too. They didn't invent it. Don't want to kid you. But I'm kidding you. Now, now I'm blending um, the white into um, this. But I might get a little more particular and put some more of it on. I'm on a broken line, which indicates a little ruggedness and the light. Bring out the light. You know, Renoir, the great French artist, he had some of those brilliant, beautiful colors. And he said, don't paint the picture, paint the light. And that's something to think about. Paint the light, you know, just, um, it's your, it's your light that makes the forms and shapes. And, um, well, we got a little something going like that. Now let's, um, don't have to use copal. Uh, just do it without. Um, I do it because um, I like I like the blending more. If you do it without, it's just a little bit more chunky, which that's okay too. But I I, I blend myself and. Um,
How you doing? Glad you stayed with me this long. You know, this seems like maybe it's a little slow. I tell you, years ago I tried to get art lessons. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I went to a class and I said, well, why did you mix those colors? What, you know, what, why are you doing it that way? And she couldn't answer me. And I, and uh, then I says, well, what should we do in here? And she says, whatever you want to. And I says, I don't know what I want to do. You know, I said, um, why are there so many blues and reds and greens? But you know, here's all these grumbachers and all these different colors, and and uh, she couldn't or wouldn't answer me. And I thought, well, I don't know if she, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I looked around to the others, and they, she didn't put up any thing um, to do. She said, do what you want to do. Well, she wasn't. I didn't stay, because I wanted to know this, this, and that, and how do you do it. But I wanted to know. And I was frustrated. And I, I left from there, and then I moved to another town, and I went into an artist that was quite accomplished. And he told me, if you use just three primary colors, you know what I'm given here, you can paint anything you want. Well, in my case, that was the end of the frustration. Because I didn't, you know, I knew how things ought to look, but I didn't know what to do. Um, so, I come to conclusions that if you've learned to paint the hard way, the other lady, you know, she hadn't, she had been to a lot of art in college, but um, it couldn't answer my questions. I was frustrated. And I'm not putting her down. I just, I just know where the beginner that just wants to spend some time alone and paint for the enjoyment of it needs to know. And um, like I say, we went out to that art group, and and I just looked over their shoulders and watched them. The lady was very nice. She put up a still life so we could all paint it. And it had to have some brass colors in it, and I didn't know how to make brass. So, I just kind of kept snooping around. And um, mine turned out just as good as the rest of them. But I think that was the first time I had ever mixed paint. And I was so thankful to those dear ones that have these little clubs, you know, in the country, in the country towns, and um, some of them are very good at one thing, and some at the other, but simple questions, my goodness, and um, so we came to California. And uh, I just, I thought, well, i got to buckle down because I'm too flighty, for one thing, and I, I want to get some quality paintings, not just, you know, knock out a bunch of junk. So, uh, guy, I, I still don't know what to do. So, I thought, well, I want to get an art teacher, but I want to make sure they know what they're doing. So. That's what I say. They can't sell, and you know, and they haven't had any success. I don't know if I'd waste my time with them. So I was looking for a successful teacher, 
And um, so I got a real good one. I, I just prayed and I'd say, Lord, you gave me the talent, you gave me the paint, now how do you want it? To my amazement, and I'm telling you the truth, I just knew. I Don't ask me. I just knew. And then um, I would just, you know, just praying like that as I paint. And one day this vapor type thing came to me. And uh, um, it's kind of a heavenly glow. And uh, I've heard some very nice remarks about it. And um, God created this world, the sky and the mountains and the rocks, and He knows how it's done. Now you, and I, I just told Him, I said, you look here, I said, do you know that that scarlet vermilion is $30 a tube? And I said, every morning and every evening you do a sunset or sunrise, and you just spread that stuff clear across the sky. Wow, what a paintbrush. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't, uh, and, and that's the way I see it. And that's just, that's the way I go about it. That's the way I learned. And uh, so, I just learn from nature, learn from the way, from the Creator Himself. And he, wouldn't he make a good art teacher? Look at the shades of greens and blues and you know, I can't help but I I'm just overjoyed with all that color and patterns and and light changes and how it changes quickly. Sitting there at the forest one day and sun hadn't come out and everything was just gray. <clears throat> All of a sudden there was one branch that come across there and there's just a little bit of sunlight on that one branch. And the rest of it was like an orchestra that just hadn't started up yet. And it was kind of like a, it made, it made me think really of kind of like a little piccolo that was just starting off. And then pretty soon the whole thing come alive with light and um, I could see that somebody very special had created everything in perfect perspective and unity of color and all. And the painting that got me in the 25th United Nations meeting in San Francisco, it was only five of us, was a painting. At the time I was quite depressed, but it was a painting black and white which broke the rules and it was kind of ugly. <laughs> and I, 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 uh, I show you somewhat how, how it looked. I did it in black and white, but I did did these huh. color here. A little more. But it was a twenty fifth United Nations meeting and all the celebrities were in San Francisco. All the kings and representatives of every country was there. And here I am, just a little country girl that trying to learn how to paint, and I had put in a prayer request, but I really didn't know what I wanted. I just just wanted something, and um, take whatever it was that would satisfy me. I knew there was something out there I didn't have. And so, anyway, I painted this black and white foggy of the forest. And there really wasn't anything else in it. I mean, it was even a dark sky. I'm kind of making up a palette here. I'll tell you about it. 
Okay, now, these trees were somewhat in the fog. See? You see the line go up? Oh, I'm not in your way. Uh, now these, like this. Okay. And how do you make them foggy? Now see the side of that knife, it, the paint goes right under this blade. Now this is how you make them foggy. You come right down on it and s you smear it this way. That's what my great teacher showed me. Watch the stroke of the knife. I'm going to put my smaller trees in the distance, lighter. See, we're going to have some big ones come in here too. But this is something that many artists at the shows have tried to figure out. How I do it, and I haven't really felt like telling them. <laughs> and they've guessed everything. You know what is she doing? Well, wasn't doing it for them, not for my class. Some trees up here, some here. The name of the painting that went to San Francisco was called The Beginning of Hope. It had that little bit of light on it. And that black and yellow makes green in here. Black and yellow makes green. Now I'll scrape up some of this stuff and I got blue and red in it. Okay. Now, these come forward, and this makes a very good, uh, just a foggy scene. You make all kinds of scenes. You know, I just love to make, make these trees. I make them on a long one, it goes clear across the picture, but it's, it's how you turn the knife and and paddle around in it. Let's see. So the painting was mostly see it was original because I saw it actually in the forest. It made an impression on me. It uh, fascinated me because everything looked so gloomy. Then in that particular painting, I had a little pool, had a little bit of blue in it, but long strokes of grass, and everything was black and white, except that little bit of blue, but it, it had one blade of grass, had a chunk of yellow sunlight. I called it 
the beginning of hope. Well, um, there was a, a preacher from the Midwest bought it, but there was a Catholic priest come in there and he told him, he says, you better look at that painting. It was in a gallery in San Francisco and and uh, so that got me in the show. And I represented the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, if you don't believe the Bible, that's okay, but I'm just telling you how I learned to paint, okay? But I give him all the praise and all the glory. That's okay if you don't miss with me. But you want an art lesson, so that's part of it. I've had um, all kinds of people in here taking lessons and none of them are offended by it, so I thought, yeah, I'd put it in there. I'm not going to go into this too far, but you see, each time I'm putting in stronger colors and making the trees taller and chunkier. Okay? After it sets up, they might get another chunk on. <laughs> little highlight or something. You know? Of course, the shadow is on this side. Some lights on the other side. You like that? That is easy to do. It's easy to learn. And um, um, you'll use it always. You know what I I believe is if you you paint you start at a basic place. I like when I was learning the seascapes. You know, I said, well, as far as I know, this is the way. I mostly like to paint waves. I'll use this technique until I find something that appeals to me more. And this is the way I like to make rocks. This is like the way I like to make um, trees. And as long as it's working, I'll just use this. And then if I run into something that does a better job, I'll move on. That's makes sense to me. I'll get some more of those because if you're like me, you kind of like to play in it. Yeah. See, the bigger, the stronger, and the more chunky, and uh, coming forward. And I didn't come clear down to the line because I'm going to save a little green. I, I want to show you the key to these is that you make them in three dimensions because you keep bringing it stronger so you look down into the picture. And these strong trees set off these mountains quite nicely. And they, these trees can have more color in them. It's just that I'm trying to move right along and, and I think that comes with the second coat. Um, okay. Now I'll show you here what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in 
on some yellow and uh, just smear it right in with existing paint and uh, do I paint abstracts? I have and uh, they're kind of fun and uh, I don't know I'm just I'm fascinated with nature and I don't think I need anything distorted I'm just about messed up enough I think about distorting anything <laughs> better stay close to truth You know, you, you try all these different things to see what, um, where you really are. Um, um, I kind of got it in my head that we should, when we're painting something, paint something that won't embarrass somebody that's on their wall, like something ridiculous, you know. Because you got to think of the person that's going to buy the painting or hang it. And, uh, but if you really don't like somebody, um, give them a distorted picture. It'll drive them crazy. Well, if you stayed with me this long, you are now my pets and my darlings. Okay? And um, I want to go into um, do this water. I want to show you reflections. And we're kind of getting on into this tape. And before I finish, I'm going I'm to, um, before the fi this is finished, I want to put in little blacks and, you know, a little under there. That can be done when it's dry with the tissue. But um, I know those things are important, but can't get it all on the tape. And um, um, now, can I mix something? Impression blue in here, and um, um, and this is the part that uh, is rather fascinating. I think that's another little skill. You say, well, where all, where all will you use it? You'll use this for a, you're going to do a beach, you want it shiny, you know, you're going to learn to do shiny. And, uh, um, okay, you saw the palette, okay. I got this kind of blue and black here. It's, we just, we just have to, the rest of this is going to be just like that is. I just can't get it all on the tape. So I'm going to make that much of it. And uh, if we want to take a two-bit tour through the, the studio and, and see what's going to become of you. See if you can see. Now, make it shiny like this. It's not the only way to do water, but that's the way this will do until something else comes along. I think it's just fine. And um, I like it. I never get tired of it. Okay. Do you notice the strokes are up and down? Up and down. Well, what a mess. Yes, it's 
a mess. stuff up in there so smear in there just a little bit dab will do you and there's some yellers yellow in here and put some yellow oh yeah get pretty lively with this we'll get this thing on here you having fun enjoy being with you. Painting is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. And uh, a place where you can go and nobody criticizes you. <laughs> and uh, um, just, just a, I, I sit here and enjoy uh, a lot of my snapshots and of course I usually have music out here. In, uh, this studio is going to be built on to and, uh, quite soon, mm -hmm. so I have more room. I didn't uh, huh. okay now it's like this. Look. I'm keeping the darker color. I didn't go down to that yet. Clean the knife and I come down. It's putting all in grays in their places. And that's enough to concentrate on getting those grays where you want them. They're pretty awkward gray, I guess. But once Anyway, the story about the United Nations art show, we had celebrities from Hollywood that sponsored us, or just five of us, and honestly, we saw the limousines, all the kings and representatives from all over the world were there. And uh, my paintings got invited, but I don't know, nobody told me to come over. But we went over and looked. And uh, sure enough, and I had letters from the celebrities that sponsored me and I grinned all of that. But, uh, what I wanted to stress was the reason that painting got in there was because it represented what they were all thinking. The United Nations was talking about beginning a hope. What are we going to do with this mess? And the painting said it. Find me a Picasso. He uh, painted something that uh, on the people and physics were trying to say 
and very well expressed, and that's... But, but, but what I mean is, let's look for originality. Because um, you're not ever gonna hit the big time art unless it's totally original. You know? I've thought of a lot of nice things that the thinkers are trying to say, but it's got to come from the heart. It's got to be something that I also am trying to say. And when you get into something like that, you're going to... Well, I don't want it to look like a bloodbath. I do my... <laughs> it looks like a reflection. <laughs> like somebody just shot a bear. <laughs> but if you, it, it isn't really... Now, if you get the technique and you, you, you get to where you can paint, you express something. I, I had a seascape painting that one of my doctors bought years ago, and and it was um, such a stirring of the ocean, you know. And I, I titled it "The Gathering of the Waters," and that that was what I was trying to say. Sometimes someone else can say it. So much better. But uh, there now. See, it's this blending right back to the blending. When you look around looking for some subjects. What is it that really kind of inspires you? You know, I like little vegetable gardens. We've got some up here on the summit, and they're mixed with um, some tropical fruit orchards, you know, and then there'd be a little patch of corn and tomatoes. <laughs> I don't know, there's something awfully cute about them, and I don't see anyone else painting little vegetable gardens, but I think that they're Pleasant. Looks like um, I see a lot in that. And um, I had a picture of the granddaughter I took with the, myself, the camera, and um, she was out on the hillside playing the violin, all, you know, the long blonde hair, and she's about 10. A big yellow cat was sitting there at attention, listening to it. And I got all over the house trying to find that thing, because I, I think it ought, it ought to be in a painting. And it's that catching that particular mood. <laughs> and I'm going to come back to this, but I'm going to take you on the tour. Well, this is... Um, this is a big one. It's um, a two and a half feet by five feet. It's pretty good sized. And um, this is, I was kind of patterned it a little bit off of that. I don't, I don't like to stay right on it. But this one has been a very good seller, this type. They're not all alike, of course. But you know, once you do your mountains, once you learn how to do your still water, you do a little something else and change it each time. Um, that's called style. It's not called copying, or if you've seen one, you've seen them all. It's not. It's just that when someone sees one of those, they recognize that it's mine. And uh, it's okay. One of the seascapes. Uh, these are huge. They're four foot by five. I guess I'm going to have to put them under the gallery lighting. There's a very large 
painting, it's a two and a half feet by five foot. So these end up going down the hall here. <laughs> here I call it killer waves. I was photographing right into the waves and um, the next day the headlines on the Mercury News said killer waves sweeping them off the rocks. So we realized that we were getting too dangerous with this camera. But I painted it and I like it. Four foot by five foot. It's a huge painting. And um, I got five or six of them like that. Um, big ones, you know. Not all alike, of course. Four foot by five. Um, not quite as big. It's um, shaped a little bit different. Okay. You're going to see in here, look at the, you know, the vapor on the water and the, and the light and the waves. That's all done with that blending. Sky, see, rocks, same thing. One, um, I photographed up on Russian River, up a, a north of San Francisco, and the colors are indescribable in the golf course up there. And I couldn't get enough of it. This was way early morning, and we walked down from our motel, and there was a pathway down there. But what I'm trying to show you is, look at these reflections, that up and down stroke, and then across, you know, up across. But there's those trees, those vapor trees. And uh, now let's, same thing, you know, showing you. I don't know, this camera, let's yeah, see if it's in focus, what about there? Okay, it's interesting to see how it's all is a um, reproduction, and um, it, the originals to these more well-known reproductions are quite valuable, and um, I think this one's one of my favorites, as far as I'm concerned. It's, maybe it's not worth the most. The green cypress is worth the most because of the tourist attraction. But here you've got the same rocks with the water pouring over it, and the sky, the moody sky, and uh, I don't know, that one, that one appeals to me, probably one of the best. Now this one is um, four foot five, and I'm standing up here to show you in proportion how big it is. This is our gallery wall, the high ceiling, and and um, we have the gallery lighting on it. And um, just to give you some idea, it um, my idea is that the mountains are big, paint them big. The sea is big, paint it big. The um, redwoods are big, paint them big. And when I do this, I feel like I'm right in the picture. And uh, um, this is something I think the old masters found out about painting these large, humongous paintings. It must have uh, cheered up some of those wealthy palaces rather than to look at those bare walls. But, you know, like if you come in off the freeway and you're, you're tired or something, and you sit and look at the picture, you want to feel kind of in it. And I like these big mountains especially because you can have a little bit of the mountain with you and um, it, it'll um, be like a big window. So that's, that's my idea, is to paint them big. And uh, boy, I, that, that tells what the mountains are like, you know. You paint that thing on a little one and see, you got your lesson. And you know how to make foggy trees and up and down water. And you know your little crusty mountain shapes and ridges. You can do it. Nile came from my own garden. We had a bunch of them out at the curb, and I just can't get enough of those. So I, I matched my patio with my rug, 
And this is my dining room painting, four foot by five. And um, I, I um, like the big ones. Uh, a lady was interested in this one to buy it the other day, and I don't know, maybe she'll come around. But this little water dripping off of here, and the sky all blended, and you were going back to blending, see? And here's your trees. See, I like these forests like that. There's lots of little grays in there, and it doesn't matter really fine. Pretty nice, you know. It's uh, higher priced paintings. And I'm showing you this because uh, you'll be able to use your lesson in lots of um, four foot by five. It's really a mural size. You can just imagine with a five and a half inch frame. Besides, I'm holding out for a pretty good price on this because I, I think I can get it. <laughs> okay, thank you. This is the Golden Gate Bridge. It's, um, um, I think it's about four feet by six or something. And I had reproductions of it. We'll tone it down here and look at it. It's kind of dark. Down at the end of the hall, we have a long ramp hall, and it's at the very end of the room. My favorite. And it's had reproductions in fan mail. And uh, uh, I just want you to see that these the same system goes through all these paintings, a style. It, it's called style and um, it, you really aren't going to get into galleries and all until you get a style. You uh, you can paint other things but I'm just saying that uh, you do gain a style. You finally find out where you fit in and these have been successful. One is another a soft, murky um, mountain, and uh, you know, you can put any kind of flowers up in front of it, and that's another way of doing it. It's the blossoms from a photograph I took, oh, down the street a ways. We see those mountains out here, the way to Santa Cruz from San Jose, and we had a lot of uh, blossoms and orchards are disappearing for freeways. We got a big one going right through in front of this one here. This is um, one, um, oh, I found a wonderful place to photograph up at, um, by Eureka. No, it wasn't that far up. Uh, oh, that forest up there. Forest ranger sent me down here. The creek and I loved it. Off course, and it's on the 17 mile drive. The Holiday Inn managers asked me to do this one so they could offer it to their tourists. And uh, not really my favorite. I like the golf course. I don't know if I like those rocks. But I'm beginning to paint golf courses now. And uh, they liked it, and they we make, we make prints off of Good morning. I left this painting set out in the sun yesterday afternoon after we painted it. And uh, I brought it in. I'm going to show you how we take a little tissue and can change and rub in some other colors. This camera is going to go off on us suddenly, so I want to say I had a nice time with you, and I love being with you, and I'm glad you're painting. Okay? Um.
put a little blue in here, possibly a little white. It um, kind of gives it a little hollow look, I just think. Uh, um, if you're going to say, for instance, to see the sky isn't covered well, let it get good and dry and just paint the whole thing over. I do that a lot. And, um, uh, this, I don't think it's overworking it. I think it's, um, giving me a chance to get another whack at. Blue foggy uh, here, a little more fog. See, I can come, see, I can come right over that. And uh, see what I can do with this? Suppose we did want a waterfall, and it's coming right through here, like that. Yeah, that's that's all. And just uh, put a little. It's not the proper place for one. I like that. You're going to need that in your mountain scenes. Uh, no, there's not water coming from there, but I just wanted to show you how it's done. Um, well, you want to just, for some reason or other, there's some fog lays in here. You do it the first time with your knife, but you can come in with another little, and that also looks like smoke from the campfire, <laughs> right, find your way. <laughs> um, now, this, this is what I was doing, I guess, I, I did a couple of those, okay, just put a little, another coat on there, a little more. Yellow, black, and red. You know, I wanted to show you why. I really don't mind buying the high price spread. That's about all I squared out at a time. See? And I don't make the blue, I put a little bit bigger piles of it. And the yellow, I, I don't put it out because I don't use that much. This stuff is very potent, and um, I can make it two blasts a year. I don't paint every day, but paint big and I do undercoats. It's amazing how far it'll go. So don't squirt out a big gob like that. And uh, some of the students did it. It wasn't necessary. <laughs> okay. I had some of the cutest little ladies in my class. I had a lady, uh, 75 years old, and she painted a little something like Grandma Moses. And uh, I had to spend a little time getting her to have confidence that she could paint, and the, the class really wanted her. You know, and, uh, so one of the reasons people don't paint is because someone's hurt them or something. You don't feel confident to be right out in public with it. Um, don't let that happen to you. You know, the people you think are going to appreciate it, some of your closest friends, they won't say anything. <laughs> They're not the ones. <laughs> it boils down to it. It'll be strangers a lot and uh, be the ones that actually 
pay for a painting. I think it's probably the greatest compliment you can get if they're willing, if they're willing to pay. You know, you can give paintings to people, but if they're not interested in art, it's, it's a waste of time. You know, there's so many out there that really do appreciate it. They appreciate uh, nature the same way as we do. And uh, uh, so this, those are the ones. Now, um, I was showing this here. Now, make a shadow and you want to have some afterthoughts. Okay, a little bit of blue and black in there. It's your watercolors. Okay. And, uh, this is your tissue. So don't give up if the first time across it didn't turn out just the way you wanted it. Because you can come along and fix it, but do it as best you can the first time. Now, look here, I'm going to, I don't want that to go clear down into here. Let's see? Stay in there with your camera and get your own compositions. And uh, look for something totally original. Original idea. Something that, see if you can find your own ecstasies. I had a one of my doctors called late at night one night. He wanted to know how I priced my paintings, by what method. I told him ecstasy. And you, as you paint, you're going to begin to understand that ecstasy. If you have an excitement at a certain time of the day and you see the waves there at the beach, they roll up. I was sitting there with the camera, and if I'd got it two minutes before, I wouldn't have had it, or two minutes afterwards. But there was a moment when the sun was just right and the yellow wave reared up and the splash came over. And I called it the moment of greatness because that was the time to take that picture. It was a snapshot and I had something special. It had to be that right morning. So take your photographs early in the morning up till 10 o'clock or get some sunsets, but you gotta get them at the right time. And uh, then there's special subjects that you just catch in a flash, but it's something that thrills you, something that um, is beautiful. And uh, all the photographers know that, and the, um, the people making movies, but it's gotta be well, it's the timing. It's what the comedians talk about. I hope I'm not a comedian. Um, but um, there's just it's kind of like a, maybe like a joke. One tells it and it's funny, and the other one tries to tell it and it's pathetic. <laughs> So you know that gift, you have it, or you wouldn't be in this. I am surprised sometimes um, at someone else's color schemes. 
and uh, it's just it's just them. Um, this lady. Oh, it's, her colors were so much different than mine. But one day she set a table, and she had burgundies and reds and deep, rich reds for her flowers and for her color scheme. And it wasn't me, but you know, it sure told a lot about her. It was her. And it, it, it was just beautiful. And um, I can tell quite a bit about people by kind of colors they choose. Um, you'll find most everything I get into, I end up with this vermilion. And, um, I'm just stuck on it. I, I see vermilion everywhere in everything. <laughs> and uh, see, I'll get a little bit of this in here and I'll blend it. See? Put a little bit more here. See? Kind of. had a sky not long ago that was too many clouds and too much, you know. And I, I just did like this and changed them. And sometimes, you know, where your light's coming from, you can take this, make, but you do it wet on dry, you know. And this is your sunlight hitting on the water or something to that effect. I'll get that and I'll just rub that. The reason it's not scary is because you can rub it completely off. See? See, well, I, I'm going to wreck the painting. Well, you won't. You wait till it sets up good and dry. See? You bring it right down through the, the picture. You bring swoop it right on down and right hit, hit on the water. And um, 